This is the second uh, game we will touch uh, today. Sochko against Gunina. A couple of things to say. Monica Sochko and her husband uh, Bartos uh, Sochko, the best, uh, two of the best uh, Polish players, you know, that there are those years. That the one wins the women championship, the other one wins the men's championship, completely dominating the scene. I mean, obviously there are many players in, especially men's chess uh, in Poland. Uh, but Sochko is a strong grandmaster. A little bit, uh, you know, her chances were uh, underrated in this tournament. But uh, she is seasoned. She is uh, in the. You know, when she plays good, she really plays good. And this is one of these games. This is from Sochko's part, uh, you know, the chess family, good chess culture. You have somebody to play chess at home, which uh, I also suffer sometimes. <laughs> it's like also you have, to, you have to defend your castle, you know, who is the best at home. <laughs> so, and Gunina who had a great run in the tournament and she is the last European champion, champion. she is the defending champion here yes. yeah? so, and she already lost one game then they went into an exchange slot couple of words to say I mean many people think that some of these exchange lines are drawish. That's not the case. Because of the symmetry, who has the first move, if the defense doesn't uh, get constructed the best way, may have some devastating attack. That's why many people, including myself, we played a lot of exchange slots with white. Also, on the black side, not always you feel safe. The good thing is because of the symmetry, if white makes a couple of lapses, you may also try to play like white. But if white brings uh, some flame into the position, then, then you know, like a black may have a tough, tough day. And this is one of them. So, came the first important junction that uh, white could play knight f3 here and she has chosen e3 both have pros and cons if you play knight f3 after the Chebanenko way of handling the whole of the game, that you may try for instance knight e5 which is uh, in my opinion the most dangerous move in the position and also in my opinion uh, Black couldn't uh, reach full equality after this move, although it tries. So, another line comes like what happened in the game. Possibly the most dangerous line. And pieces moving back and forth. Just uh, we, this is what will be in the game. That uh, white has some some chances in this position because kick the bishop from f5, and if you wanna bring this bishop back to f5, then the other bishop you have to play it to g7, and then uh, you know you are not a happy camper with this bishop on g7 against the wall d4, e3. I would say like, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is the map to handle this position. Here, after this one, queen b3 at the moment is the most dangerous. Not anymore, all this e3, bishop b5, black has means of uh, countering with that. But, uh, and after a6, knight to e5. There's a lot of things to say after Queen D6 that we will have such a long program that you know tonight we have to all of us we have to get stuck here, which is impossible. 
And uh, I mean, it's in the nature of the position. I brought one piece in bishop f4, you play a6, I go forward, knight e5. I mean, you equalize, you really have to equalize. There is some really very, very dangerous lines for black. And this is another version which was uh, considered by people like me years ago that I really considered that with knight f3 black has more chances. Now I'm not so sure. And uh, Sochko has taken the second way. She, she did it with e3. And after a6, possibly she would go for this position, which was probably considered to be really the complete equality. But now, due to the many people's efforts, it's not so rosy for black. It's not so rosy for black. I mean, uh, the first guy to win a couple of good games was uh, Grandmaster Sumets from Odessa. And as I can tell you, you know, uh, people who play these positions should be ready to handle it uh, on both sides of the board. I remember like I've beaten, uh, when I won uh, Palmyra Open in Odessa in uh, the year 2004, I've beaten uh, Sumets, uh, Andre Sumets with, with Black in this opening, but uh, you know, just uh, once again, a lot of, uh, I mean, if you sit on the Black side, you know that there are some dangers, and if you sit on the White side, then the biggest danger is how to break uh, Black's defense, how to take him out of the shell. Here it looks like this is a nasty position for black. All of a sudden, you know, it gained a lot of uh, popularity. So, I am sure that Monica, she would play like this in case of uh, a6. But Gunina, looks like she does in both cases uh, Bishop f5. She did play bishop f5, which is a little bit even more dangerous than the lines with knight f3. Again, the challenging maneuver. And here you will see that uh, not only queen c2, white has the move bishop b5. This is another approach coming from this move order. Well, choice is a choice. Uh, if I would have this position, I would have chosen bishop b5. But uh, after knight c6, to go with the queen to d1. Not to have any problems on c lines, we will see. That, uh, so she, uh, she didn't choose this, uh, but she has simply stepped back to C2. And now came the link in between two lines. This is a transposition to the knight f3 lines, and uh, black has chosen bishop b4. I would say, like, I don't know, I have to seriously study the history of the players, you know, not only the games, it's just one game. I I think uh, that Gudina plays with black slav, and she played a lot of slavs, she's a master of it. But I had the impression that uh, she really didn't know what to do against this line. It looks like she looked at the, some of these positions, obviously, the uh, sympathetic Russian uh, player, uh, she has coaches and stuff like Rublevsky, a master of slav, and uh, who is kind of bit, uh, accepted played a lot of games when we were top boards for Montenegrinian teams with him. He was playing for Radonia Bojevic and I was playing for Montenegro Banka, which became Buduchnost in time. A lot of draws. Very strong theoretical player, very strong player physically. <laughs> not, only, not only mentally, but physically. And uh, after this game, okay, they will study it this position, if she wants to play the opening like this. Because, I mean, one idea is to push b5. 
and after a3 just to push b4 and exchange and to get rid of uh, some to get rid of material and uh, my former teammate Zaich with whom I had some game you know at the first in the first round of Parachi he played knight c4 here and after white knight e5 I had some advantage I mean uh, it was a very, I mean, it was a very wavy game, ups, ups and down, and then uh, I was winning, then I blew it up, and then won some, uh, you know, strange endings, which I shouldn't win most likely, which I shouldn't have won. But uh, here, I mean, look at the position, it, it appeals to white more, in my opinion. I mean, b5 probably is what uh, black should do at some moment. And how she did, I really... I really don't like it. Uh, she did bishop b4. Castles came for both sides. White jumped knight e5. Something didn't go very well for black. I mean, if you have bishop b4 and you don't want to take bishop c3, then uh, you are not happy about it. If you have knight on a5 and uh, you really cannot bring it, into the game because uh, I mean it will hurt your pawn structure at least. And uh, something went wrong. Uh, I mean Gunina is a very strong player, but she is still this uh, raw material. You know some some positions uh, she has to round up. Her reaction here, in my opinion, was uh, really really nervous. Also, we have to understand her. You are the European champion. One year passed. You want to win it again. Psychologically, you will do everything to win it again. You will take risks. But uh, unfortunately, with our game, you know, this is uh, leading to trouble in most of the cases. In most of, most of the cases, really, it uh, it may lead to some trouble. So seemingly, Black exchanged some pieces. She is only a little bit uh, away to achieve something. But that came very big surprise. D5, possibly overlooked by former European champion. Because after e takes d5, queen b4 wins a piece. Very nice double attack. Knight takes d7, queen takes a5, and simply queen takes c3 are threatened at the same time. There is no way to protect three pieces. It's like juggling yeah, with uh, all these things. Uh, uh, it doesn't happen, and once it doesn't happen to be the case, probably if, if she has seen it, uh, you know, it's... Uh, she played here, now things are getting quickly very bad for black. And white has tremendous edge, in my opinion. White simply had to go to d7 with the knight. So our usual question, knight or bishop, knight or bishop, now I should make the, you know, <laughs> I need my second blues brother. No, actually, actually the highlight of all this, uh, the whole championship would be probably question bishop or knight. No, of course, I mean, let's, let's remember the famous case that uh, when uh, Fischer and Petrosian, they were playing in Buenos Aires. Fischer won a marvelous game by taking the good knight by his... Uh, so sorry, by taking the bad bishop by his knight. Mm -hmm. Neidorf entering... Uh, we don't have such people, for God's sake. Miguel Neidorf, who, who, with whom I had some sort of in his last year, some, let's say, acquaintance. He was a very interesting person. He enters the press center like somebody now will open the door. Says like, idiot, idiot. Why did he actually? It was a very good move. 
but nobody really appreciate that, uh, you know, sometimes uh, when these minor pieces are exchanged, remaining uh, counterparts uh, may really make the game very easy for one side. And this is the case. Like, uh, look at the position. The knight is on a5. Returns into the game unless you somehow juggle it, you know, to e6 or g6 somewhere, which is not the case. Okay? We, a position like this is a dream position. But uh, Monica already, she felt like she is a big age, and she was always an attacker. I mean, I uh, I know these people since their young days. I mean, some time ago, Branko was telling to my wife that I know Suat when then I say, yeah, but I was tall. Yeah, like, <laughs> I know him since he was this this tall. This is true. We played in '78. I was slightly taller, but uh, as an age, I should be uh, of that uh, height. Uh, and uh, since the first time I have seen Monica, she was always an attacker. And I mean, here I think, uh, I don't know, she directed her forces into the king's side. Knight f3, I mean, just uh, a bad uh, reaction, a blunder by black, after which she should have lost something. Immediately. I mean, the threats are really abundant here, you know, just uh, rook c6, bishop c5, or bishop c7. Two nasty scoovers from both sides, from here and from there, which we should uh, practically terminate the game. But uh, we have to say also that, uh, I mean, this is top chess, top positions in this tournament they had, you know, yesterday, and they sort of will keep these positions, I, I believe, uh, people become nervous. I mean, uh, people become nervous if they are losing or if they are winning, equal. It's a common case. It's a common case. That's why, you know, uh, best world championship matches were not uh, between the really two strongest players of that time. I mean, Fischer Spassky, for instance, was full of mistakes. The tension was too big for the people to handle. And white came with queen e5. Black played only move rook a3. Now white went deep, threatening the rook on a3. Sorry, we, we have the rook on b5. So this is the position, sorry, I made a big mistake. Knight f3, h6, as we said, bishop d6 would have won. In this case, nothing changed. Uh, we sh uh, should have won the game. But uh, after this, white went uh, queen e7. Obviously, if the rook moves, bishop d6, rook d8, bishop c7 remains as a threat. And this is the moment uh, Gunina really lost it. I mean, this is the moment only move, queen e6, the counterattack, would could have achieved uh, something. Uh, because if you take after queen e6, if you take this rook, I also take the one on d5. Uh, Nothing happens. And if you play bishop d6, seemingly, you know, winning the game, still after rook e8. I have my doubts because now the generally considered two rooks better than the queen 
Once again, it's like bishop uh, to knight type of uh, equality. Here, uh, I even find it uh, uh, more promising for black. Maybe I can throw this queen to e4 and then to a4. I mean, uh, she would be safe. But as we have, uh, as we have spoken, many of these big encounters, the best players, the highest rated players, you know, like it's all with the nerves. When Queen E7 came, she possibly considered uh, her position to be already very difficult, or uh, once again about the time management uh, we should know, that she played Bishop E6, came Rook D6, this is game over, like we have talked. Tactical awareness uh, in today's chess is very important. I mean, here, she just, uh, once this rook d6 allowed, you have to protect with the queen the rook. Knight c6 you cannot shut because of rook takes c6 and the rook is an priest. So, you really, queen b4, this time rook takes c6 uh, connects uh, queen and rook together, you lose another time uh, the piece. Here, it's the same thing uh, by a different uh, reduction because f takes e6, white has the luxury to have the score on e5 with the checkmate or on d6. Of course, e5 should be yeah. you know, uh, chosen, but even bishop d6 is a terrible score. The whole, on the long diagonal, the, the, all the way. So after. After queen b2, rook e6, uh, I don't know, I mean, the last moves are not so important now. Not for the result of the game, but for the beauty came okay, rook g6. Very important win by Monika Sochko, probably depriving uh, Gunina, famous uh, Russian player, one of the youngest participants at the same time, yes. former uh, uh, I mean, last year's European champion. Still, she may have some chances, but uh, they became more mathematical than real after this game. So, that's all for today. Okay, so thank you, uh, Suat. And uh, this was the analysis of uh, previous round. Uh, see you today again at 6.30 with the review of uh, the 11th, uh, 10th round, uh, which is ongoing uh, at the moment. So, see you later, goodbye. Bye.